In this problem, we are going to do an example of dependent motion. So you can see the drawing here. We have block A starts from rest at time t equals zero and moves downward with a constant acceleration of six inches per second squared. Knowing block B moves up with a constant velocity of three inches per second, determine when the velocity of block C is zero and the corresponding change of position of block C. So right away, we know we have constant acceleration So we can use our constant acceleration equations. So we go back to the steps that we went through in the previous video. So step one is establish position coordinates. So we have to start from a datum. In this case, because all of the particles are moving up and down, we can just set a datum across here. And we can say xc moves down from there. We would have xd here. And then we would have xb here and xa here. They're all moving downwards as the positive direction. So downwards from this datum is our positive direction. And the origin for all particles is the datum here. Now we establish the constraint equations. So in this case, we have two ropes. So we actually have one rope here that goes from A around B and finishes at D. And then we have another rope that starts at the roof, comes down around D, up and around C, and finishes back at the roof. So that means we're going to need two constraint equations. So the length of the blue rope is going to be the position of xA plus the position of xB plus this last piece here is going to be the position of xB minus xD. So xB minus xD. And that is going to be equal to length one. So the length of the first rope. The length of the, the second rope will be equal to xd, which will be which will be from the roof down to d. And then again the length of xd. And then we have the length of xc twice. So we have 2xd plus 2xc equals L2. When you get to this point, you want to see if you can combine your two equations into one equation. In this case, I can see that I have a negative xd in my length 1 equation, and I have a 2xd in my L2 equation. So if I say 2 times the L1 equation plus the L2 equation, and I add those together, I would end up with 2xa plus 4xb minus 2xd for my L1 equation. Then we'll add plus 2xd plus 2xc equals constant for the length 2. So here, this is L1 and this is L2. Now the length of the two ropes together is still some arbitrary constant value. Now if we simplify this, and I'm going to move this up, if we simplify this, we end up with 2xa plus 4xb plus 2xc equals constant. So now we've actually removed the xd variable from our equation. This is very convenient. It simplifies our length because now we have one equation and we have one less variable. No xd. Now this is convenient if we don't care about xd but if the problem is asking us about xd, then this doesn't really simplify our life anymore because now we don't have an equation that includes that variable. So now if we take this equation, we take the derivatives like we did before, we now know, uh, and also here we have 2xa plus 4xb plus 2, so we can actually divide this whole thing by 2, and we end up with xa plus 2xb plus xc is equal to a constant number. When we take the derivatives, we have VA plus 2VB plus VC equals 0. 
and we have acceleration of a plus 2 times the acceleration of b, the acceleration of c is equal to 0. These three equations here define the motion of all of the particles of our system. We'll use these equations to come up with the answers to the question. So the first question was asking us for the time when velocity of block c is equal to zero. So if we're going to be looking for when velocity of c is equal to zero, we're probably going to need the equation va plus 2vb plus vc is equal to zero. What information in the problem do we have to help with this? So in this case, we know we want this equal to zero. For velocity of b, we know that the velocity of b is given as three inches per second upwards, and that's constant for the whole time. And so the only thing left to find here is the velocity of a. We are given the acceleration of a is equal to six inches per second squared downwards. We're also given the initial velocity of a, oops, of a is equal to zero. From our constant um, acceleration equations, we can then say velocity of a is equal to velocity not of a plus the acceleration of a times t. So in this case, we have velocity of a is equal to zero plus six times time. Now, why do I have a plus six here, even though it was six inches per second downwards? That's because we defined our positive direction as downwards. So this means we now have an equation for velocity of a. We know velocity of b and velocity of c. So now we can just plug everything in. I'm going to move this upwards. So now we have six times time minus, oops, minus two times the, oh shoot, minus two times the velocity of b, which is minus three, because the velocity of b is going upwards, plus zero is equal to zero. So now we solve this, and we get 6t is equal to six, and time is equal to one second. And this is the time when the velocity of the block is equal to zero. The velocity of block c is equal to zero. The next part of the question is asking us for the distance that c has traveled in that one second. So this time we're actually going to use the same equation. We're going to say velocity of a plus 2 times the velocity of b plus the velocity of c is equal to zero. But this time we're looking for a more general equation. So instead of plugging in just that moment when velocity of c is equal to zero, we'll do an equation that keeps that time variable in. So that's what this will look like is 6 times t, which is the equation for velocity of a, um, minus 6, which is still that velocity of b because it's not changing with time, it's constant, plus vc is equal to zero. When we rearrange this, we can say that vc is equal to minus 6t plus 6. And what we've done here is we've created an equation for the velocity with respect to time. So it's, um, it's an expression for any value of time. And once you have an equation like this, you can integrate. And integration is how we figure out what that displacement would be. So we can say the velocity is equal to dx over dt. So if we move our velocities in terms of time, so we'll move this integrating term over. So then we have negative 6t plus 6 dt is equal to dx. Now we integrate, our time naught was 0, and we're looking for up to time 1. And integrate from x. Uh, not of c to x of c. When we perform this integral, we end up with negative 6t squared divided by 2 plus 6t, in this case it will be evaluated from 0 to 1, is equal to xc minus x naught of c. This portion here will be our change um, in position. So when we evaluate the right hand side here, both of these terms will go to zero when time is equal to zero. So then we end up with negative six times one squared divided by two plus six times 
exponent is equal to delta xz. This ends up being negative 3 plus 6 is equal to delta xz. I'm going to move this up a little bit. We end up with 3 is equal to delta xz. This is a positive number, which means block c moves downwards 3 inches from t equals 0 to t equals 1 second. And then that will be the final.